Long Hebrews. I was watching this video called Israelites, the Northern Tribe Deception. And this brother get to explain how the chart is not real, right? And then, you know, he go into all this, but the whole time he using Jewish history. He using Jewish history, and that's a whole lot of people didn't know that the chart is not true. But they use Jewish history to try to show that the chart is not real. And at the same time, making what they say false at the same time. It's like double falsehood and stuff. You see what I'm saying? See, the whole truth of what happened to the northern kingdom is in the Tanakh. You see what I'm saying? You can't go to outside sources to explain Israelite history because if you do, you're using Jewish history. You know, this Israelite Brotherhood. This the Israelite Brotherhood. All right, check this out. We know that the Assyrians, you know, came and took some people, you know, and took them away, you know, and some Jewish myths was created because of that. You know what I'm saying? Off of that, I'm going to try to explain this, but I want to kind of get to the core of it because this phone don't record long. Shalom. All right. In 722 BC, when the Assyrians came, if you go to, uh, man, I think Second Chronicles, uh, First Chronicles, Chapter 5, verse, verse 18, you will see that the Syrians, you know, that Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh lived on the east side of the Jordan, on, on the opposite side of the Jordan, then the majority of the tribes. So they was kind of like easy to take, and then they kind of like lived in the heart of the Amorite, Moabite, and all the other people's, you know, land that we were supposed to take is because they was the fighters. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to establish a little history first. All right. All right. All right. Uh, uh, sec first Chronicles 5, 18. The sons of Reuben and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, violent men, Able to bear a buckler and sword and to shoot with a bow and skillful in war, war four and forty thousand seven hundred three score that went out to war. All right, them gonna be the ones that the Syrians need because the Syrians was kind of like having trouble with the Babylonians. Remember, the Babylonians destroyed Assyria in 625 BC. The Scythians, the Medes, and the for other nations got together and they destroyed Assyria in 615 BC. So you got to keep that in mind. All right. These are the people that the uh, Assyrians needed to help them. You know, we were slipping on that Egyptian worship. So it was easy to come kidnap them. You know what I'm saying? It was easy to kidnap them because we was on that Egyptian worship since Jeroboam time. When Solomon passed away, that was around by 9. 31 BC, you know, somewhere like that. All right, you know what I'm saying? That's a whole nother history. All right, but look. All right, this is First Chronicles 5, verse 26. All right, and the Elohim of Israel stirred up the spirit of Paul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Talakbalaz, king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Hala and Harbor, and Hera and to the river goes on uh, unto this day. So those are the ones that the uh that the Syrians need. So to show you that you know that the Syrians didn't take no ten tribes, you go to uh to Second Chronicles. You know, we're gonna be dealing with King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah, uh you know what I'm saying this was wrote around about seven 715 BC. This was like seven years after the Sepharvim, which is the Hebrew word for Sephardi, after the Sepharvim was placed in America, uh, in Samaria, in Samaria. At the same time when we were slipping on that Egyptian religion, when, when the Syrians snatched the fighters, well, they placed some Babylonian scribes in our land. You see what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Let me show that real quick, too. 
So, you know, because all this kind of like tie in together to what I'm trying to show. All right, this second, second Kings. That's going to be second Kings chapter uh, 17, the uh, verse 24. All right. In the king of Assyria. All right, the second Kings, second Kings uh, uh, chapter 17, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutter and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharavim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. You see, them going to be some Babylonian scribes placed in our land at the same time when we was on that Egyptian religion and when the Assyrians kidnapped the fighters. Then them Sepharavims, the Sephardi Jews, was placed in our land. All right, to show you that everybody still here, you know what I'm saying, after the Syrian captivity, but the fighters, you go to Second uh, uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 30, and it's dealing with King Hezekiah. This dealing with King Hezekiah. And uh, uh, he had all the tribes there, you know what I'm saying? Basically, he mentioned all the tribes there. as you read. Uh, Second Chronicles 30, and then it, you know what I'm saying, go all the way down, you'll see that verse 6 says, So the post went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Elohim Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return unto the remaint of you that are escaped out of the hands of the kings of Assyria. So, you know, them Hebrews were still there. And then as you read, you know what I'm saying, he'll mention, you know, some of the tribes names. All right. Nevertheless, all right. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying, this is 30, 2 Chronicles 30, verse 10. So the post passed from city to city throughout the country of Ephraim, Manasseh, even unto Zebulun. But they laughed them to scorn and mock them. All right. Nevertheless, divers of... Asher and Manasseh and Zebulun humbled themselves and came unto Jerusalem. All right. And then as you read, you're going to also see now this is in 715 BC. This is seven years after the Syrian, you know, wars and stuff. You know, the, the troubles that they had was in Syria. All right. As you read down to verse 18, Second Chronicles 18, you'll see. And it says, for a multitude of the people even namely of Manasseh, Ephraim, Ishkar, Sabulin, had not cleansed themselves, yet they did eat the Passover otherwise that it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, the good Elohim pardon everyone. All right, you know what I'm saying? So then as you read, you know, and, and then also, you know, this is 715 B.C., this is seven years after them people was placed in Samaria by the king of Assyria, you see that they came to the Passover dinner too. All right, this is verse 25, Second Chronicles the, uh, chapter 30, verse 25. And all the congregation of Judah with the priests and the Levites and all the congregation that come out of Israel and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel that dwelt in Judah rejoiced. See, all them Sepharavims and all them, they had been starting to do our heritage seven years when, you know, King Hezekiah told everybody, all the tribes to come to the Passover dinner. These are all the people that escaped the Assyrians. So we know it wasn't no ten lost tribes, you know. And then as you read, you know what I'm saying, he talk about, you know, what happened. All right. And then you go to Second uh, Chronicles chapter 34. This is dealing with King Josiah. Now, this is a prophet, a, a, a king that was from prophecy, going back to Jeroboam days. You see what I'm saying? He was the uh, uh, prophecy king that was prophesied to come to clean the whole Israel up of that Egyptian religion. See, we was on that Egyptian religion all the way since Jero uh, since Jeroboam days when he come out of Egypt with them two golden calves. You see what I'm saying? But all the tribes not mentioned uh, uh, under King Hezekiah going to be mentioned under his great-grandson, King Josiah. And as you read Second Chronicles chapter 34, you'll see that, you know what I'm saying, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 34, verse 6. And these are the ones that he, his great-granddaddy didn't mention. And this is around 640 B.C., 640 B.C. All right. And so all... 
And so did he in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simon, even unto Nepotelli, with their mattocks round about. You know what I'm saying? He was cleaning up the land. You know what I'm saying? And and the tribes are mentioned. You know, that's like Ephraim, or uh, uh, Manasseh, mentioned in uh, uh, 34, uh, verse 9. You know, uh, uh, 34, verse 6. You know, those are the ones that wasn't mentioned in his great granddaddy days. So they had to be around if they was around, you know, all the way down to his time. All right. And then as you read, and then you get down to uh, chapter 34, 2 Chronicles 34, verse 33, you'll see that King Josiah took away all the abomination out of Israel. See, this was really our only time to get straight that would have uh, uh, saved us if we would have followed and kept doing what he had going on. But the Egyptians killed him and, and then put us back on that Egyptian worship. And then we went back, you know, into Africa. And that was during Prophet Jeremiah times. And I'm going to show you that Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah was around in King Josiah days. Look, and so Josiah took away all the abominations out of the countries that pertained to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Elohim, their Yah. And all his days they departed not from following the Elohim, the Yah of their father. So even them Jews, them sub-hardy Jews, you know what I'm saying, that was placed in our land under the king of Assyria in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24, even they had to follow the law. They was doing our covenant. Okay, let's go to the book of Jeremiah. All right, this is in 588 B.C. All right, 588 B.C. It's the Israelite Brotherhood. Israelite Brotherhood. Israelite Brotherhood. All right, the book of Jeremiah. All right. All right, let's see what it says. It's the first chapter to show that he was around in King Josiah days. All right. All right. The word of Jeremiah, the son of Halakai, of the priests that were in Anak, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Elohim came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. And we know he reigned about 40 some years, so he was fresh uh, uh, around during King Josiah's time. Prophet Jeremiah was, see, 627 B.C. to 586 B.C. See, uh, after the Egyptians killed uh, uh, King Josiah, Necho, one of the Syrian, uh, 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 placed his line on the throne before the Babylonians put their lights out around by 612 B.C. It was getting about that time the Syrians had placed the, uh, the, uh, the Egyptian uh, uh, Mishwish kings from uh, the Sahara on the line, Necho line. And Necho killed King Josiah after he had cleansed the land up from the Egyptian worship, you know. And then as you get to uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 44, you'll see that all those people that were all them tribes that was mentioned in King Josiah's time and in, in his great granddaddy King Hezekiah time had to be around still because nothing happened to them. This was during the Babylonian Wars, you know what I'm saying? In the book of Jeremiah, Babylon came immediately after they destroyed Assyria around about 595 B.C. King, uh, 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 the prophet Ezekiel and them were snatched off and, you know, they was taken to Babylon. And, and then the Babylonians uh, uh, started attacking us. So all the people in the southern kingdom ran to Judah and then we went into Africa because we had said we wanted to uh, worship the uh, queen of heaven, the, the Egyptian religion. We thought the reason we was having our troubles was because we wasn't doing the Egyptian religion. Remember, King Josiah had cleaned the land up. So all the tribes, it wasn't no lost tribes. I just established that. No lost tribes. And everybody went into Africa in the book of Jeremiah, but that 1% that was captured and took into Babylon. And, and, and how we know that these people didn't come out of Africa in the book of Jeremiah, when the Babylonians was destroyed by the Persians, is that you have the book of Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Those five prophets covered that 1% that was taken to Babylon. 
And then when the Hebrews come back home, that 1%, they didn't record these people from the book of Jeremiah coming back out. That's us. We are them. You see what I'm saying? That's how we know we are the Hebrew Israelites because we fit all the curses. And then King Josiah was told after he found the book and then sent the priests to the uh, 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 Jerusalem to ask this prophetess. She said it was over. The curses, everything was going to get us in the book. And then after King Josiah was killed by the Egyptians and, and then we went back to the Egyptian religion. We went into Africa and then that sealed our faith. All the tribes. So all you people that's teaching that Jewish history and all those extra books. Well, our history end with the book of Malachi. You see what I'm saying? He only recorded the exiles that come back. Those five prophets, Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, cover the 1% that went to Babylon and come back. And Malachi going to be the last book. And he tell you how they mixed. It was over with because we couldn't pass our heritage on to the people that were still in the land. Like the Sebhardi. See, Ashkenazi also came into the picture with the Chaldeans. You see what I'm saying? Ashkenazi code name in history is Scythian. You see what I'm saying? They chased us in Africa too. But let me show you what we said in the book of Jeremiah. All right. This is verse, uh, uh, chapter 44, verse 15, 16, 17, and 18. You know, I might can't read it all before this phone go off. But shalom, I think y'all kind of see we can't be using that Jewish history. We can only use Tanakh history to explain our history. Everything outside of that, it ain't going to add up. All right. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great Mount to even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and Patheros and answered Jeremiah saying, as for the word that thou hast spoken to us in the name of the Elohim, we will not hearken unto thee, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing go forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We, our fathers, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals to my food and were well and saw no evil. We thought because the Babylonians was coming was because we wasn't doing the Egyptian religion. So we had no heart or, or no mindset to return back to the promised land from Africa. That's why come them curses was set there for us. You know, the creator even said we was going to break break the covenant and Moses told us too. all right this verse 18 but since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by famine see we went into Africa and we never come back up out of there when we went into Egypt and we never came back up out of Egypt when we said that we wanted to worship the Egyptian religion you know what I'm saying and then the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar, come into Egypt looking for us. He didn't deport nobody to uh, Babylon or take nobody from the uh, uh, from the uh, now uh, Africa. You see what I'm saying? And then the Persians got them. And then that one percent was able to come home. The Book of Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. They was able to come home, and then they didn't record the people that went into Africa to worship the Queen of Heaven. That's why come Moses told and said we will be taken to Egypt in ships. You see what I'm saying? For us fooling with this Egypt, America created a whole nother Egypt. The folks that enslaved us created a whole nother Egypt. Even that obelisk, the obelisk called the Cleopatra Needle that's in Central Park where we was enslaved up under that in Moses' time. It's older than Cleopatra. You know what I'm saying? And we was enslaved up under that. In a, 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 it came from Halapolis. And then they brought it to a Central Park. And we was enslaved under that in Moses' time like we enslaved now under it. You see what I'm saying? The uh, uh, When Moses said we would be taken to Egypt in ships, it wasn't lying. This is Egypt. And, and and we came here by way of ships. But it ain't no ten lost tribes. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, let me show this also. So you seen that after uh, Jeremiah was around in King Josiah days. You see what I'm saying? And how after King Josiah cleaned the land up and then after the Egyptians killed him, then we go back to the Egyptian worship and go into Africa and we never return. 
And it was told by the creator that we will break the covenant. That's why come out history is identical to the curses. You know, you go to uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 31. All right, 31. 31, that's going to be 31.16. Deuteronomy 31.16. All right. 31.16. All right. Deuteronomy 30, 16. And the Elohim said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a horn after the gods of the strangers of the land, where they go to be among them, and will 